week's Big Bang, we've got some seriously big bangs. <laughs> and some flying sparks as I show you how to make an alarm for your bedroom. I'll be finding out about the Big Bangs they use in special effects. And I'll be shedding light on electricity by going back in time to see the first machines to generate electric power. But first, here's a sparky trick. Gareth, I need a jumper. Oh, that's me, all right. Ho-ho! Oh, hey. <laughs> Not that sort of jumper, the one you're wearing. Oh, I see, OK. Now, just, just hold it up in front of you. Yeah. Right, cos I ah, want to... Ah, tickles. <laughs> what are you doing? Um, look, I'm building up the static charge on this balloon, and then it'll do this. Hey, yeah. what's happening there, then? That charge on the balloon is attracting the bits of paper, and uh, when they hit it, for some of them, the charge transfers over onto the pieces of paper, and that pushes them away again. They get repelled, so they dance about. OK, I'll show you a trick. More of a bang than a spark. I can make a big bang by tapping this drinks can with a ruler. Go on, have a go. A big bang? Yeah. No, it's not very impressive. Not a very big bang. There's a trick to this, and I'll show you the trick at the end of the programme. Gareth, what's he been up to now? Chocolate? What is this? Put the chocolate down and move away from the table. <laughs> As I suspect. A chocolate thief. Gareth, what on earth is all this? Uh, well, it's my highly sophisticated chocolate sensing electromagnetic alarm system. Sophisticated? You say that again. Come here, I'll show you how it works. It caught you chocolate handed, didn't it? Look, I did notice something was going on. I mean, it didn't look like a normal bar of chocolate. <laughs> look, it is electromagnetic because this is an electromagnet. Well, it's a bolt, actually. I made this myself. It's a bolt with wire wrapped around it. And as long as that's connected to a battery, it will work like a magnet. But there's a switch in the circuit. Here it is. The two wires are connected to two bits of silver foil, and the chocolate sits on there. And the silver foil wrapped around the chocolate completes the circuit. And as long as the chocolate's there, the electromagnet will work, holding the car up. And the minute that you stole the chocolate, it released the car, which set off the gun, which released the train on the branch line, which went over there and got all that alarm system going. It's a bit over the top. Well, you know me, but I have got um, uh, a simpler alarm system over here, which warned me that you were coming. And you didn't even know about that, did you? Look at this. Where is it? There. And it's another switch. Again, using bits of silver foil, one on the floor, one taped to the underside of this carpet. But the bits of silver foil are kept apart by this spring, this cardboard spring. However, when you tread on the carpet, it pushes the two bits of silver foil together, completing the circuit and setting off my discreet alarm system over there, which tells me that there's a thief in the house and catches chocolate thieves every time. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Obviously, needs some development. Mmm. Mmm.
Ladies and gentlemen, today's strange but true story concerns a new and powerful source of energy. It remains unseen, and yet has the ability to kill a human being. It has the potential to destroy and yet tame this force and reveal its secrets. And there are great benefits for the whole world. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the wonder of the new century, electricity. This is the lecture theatre at the Royal Institution in London. It was opened about 200 years ago. And in the early days, two of its brightest sparks were Humphrey Davy and Michael Faraday. Now, at that time, the battery had just been invented. So Davy and Faraday built their own. In fact, it was the most powerful battery in the world. Now, they didn't have a Walkman to run off that battery, so they decided to use all that power to blast things with electricity. You see, Faraday and Davy were curious. They believed that it was electricity which held chemical compounds together. And they figured that if you passed a huge bolt of electricity through a compound, say like this salt cake here, then you might get it to break down to its individual elements. So they had a go. Their theory was right. And in the course of their electrical experiments, they discovered calcium, potassium, this stuff, strontium, and a number of other chemical elements. Faraday was a genius and went on to invent the electric motor and the dynamo. This made him very famous, so famous, in fact, that he appears on the back of a £20 note in this very lecture theatre. Another bright spark was a rather eccentric inventor called Nikolai Tesla, and he came up with this, the Tesla coil, and he used it to do all kinds of magical scientific demonstrations, like this. And you feel the force, Luke. And do you remember Uncle Fester from the Adams family? Well, I reckon he got his ideas from Uncle Tesla. Watch this. Brilliant. But I wonder where he put the light switch. Well, in case you hadn't already guessed, all those weather changes and the flaming brolly were produced by special effects. <laughs> this is one of our fog machines, but what it's giving out isn't actually fog, it's smoke made from burning oil. Now, the snow, that really is a trick. It uses this machine back here, and we've got Evan and Steve to operate it for us, our special effects guys. OK, can you start it up? What it takes is this. It's a liquid made from seaweed, and you mix that with huge amounts of water from a fire engine. If you then spray that through a nozzle, what you get, you can have to stand back. <laughs> what you get is white, globby stuff. But the funny thing is, if you look at this close up, it doesn't look like snow at all. It's just 
a white mess. Now, rain is even harder. A camera can't see real rain because the drops are too small. So you use a water tower like this that's got a nozzle on the top, which makes extra large raindrops. And you can get different kinds of rain with different nozzles. This one here gives you a light drizzle, and this one gives you a midsummer shower. Then you have to be careful that the rain's directed the right way. You want the camera equipment to stay dry while the presenter gets wet, but not this time. Now, all these special effects are, are illusions. You think you're seeing something, but it's not really happening. But if you want a proper Big Bang, then you have to do it for real. Now, that's a Big Bang. Easy as we go. Taking care not to touch the sides. Good, I've got a tomato and... Ah! Ah, great game, this. I call it uh, Grabbing Grub from Gareth's Gob. You've probably seen games like this before, but I bet you didn't realise they're actually quite easy to make. And you make a game like this, like this. You'll need a cardboard box with a hole cut in the top to be the mouth where you're going to grab the food out of. Now, you line that hole with tin foil. And on the inside of the lid, that tin foil is connected to a bit of wire. You can use sellotape to hold it in position. Now, that wire goes into your box and comes out of a hatch in the bottom side. Now, that hatch is really useful because you're going to have to put your food in there. Now, that wire is then connected to one terminal on a battery, and the other terminal on that battery is connected to and a light bulb from an electronics kit, uh, which is in turn connected to a wire coat hanger. Now, it has to be wire because it has to conduct electricity. You might need to sand it down with some sandpaper to make sure that it's clean and gets a good contact. And then, when you reach into your box to pull out your food, if you touch the silver paper, it completes the circuit and the light bulb does its thing. Now, you can make food to go in the box uh, by simply drawing some cartoon cake or even a, a cartoon pear uh, with bits of folded wire on the top, so that's what you hook onto to take your food out. Now, you can decorate your box. I've decorated my box using a picture of me on top. But if you haven't got a picture of me, you could even do a cartoon drawing, perhaps, of a friend of yours who's got a great big gob. Kate, come and pick some food out of my mouth, would you? Oh, what a nice offer, but not <laughs> until you've done the final Big Bang trick. Oh, see this. yes. I said I could make a Big Bang by simply tapping a drinks can with a ruler. You did. This is what you need to do. Put your can on the floor and stand on it. No, that's cheating. You're just going to crush it. I, I won't, because tubes are very, very strong. You know, they make bicycle frames out of tubes, because they're that strong. But if you were to tap the side of that can very gently now, Kate, watch, and more importantly, listen to what yeah. happens. OK. Hey! That's because the uh, tap creates a very, very small crease in the side of the can and my weight collapses the can very quickly and it makes that bang. Oh, it wouldn't work with me, though, of course, would it? Why is that? Mmm. <laughs> Watch it. Now, that's the last big bang of this week. Next week, we're going to be going into a parallel universe to explore ghosts, UFOs and other unexplained mysteries. Mmm. That's next week. Right now, though, do you fancy picking some stuff out of my garden? What do I do? Yeah. Don't you think that? Just put that into my...